All right. Get the mouse out the way again. Well, I'm in some kind of church right now. The painted glass depicts a scene from the Bible. I've never read the Bible, so I can't... I don't know what that is. Oh, I know what the Bible is. I just don't know what that picture was. Uh, there's a giant spider there. Not a fan. I'm out. Can I go see it? Spider! That's probably the most terrifying in this game so far. No, thank you. Better not follow me. There's spider webs everywhere. This is not good. Another one. I need to get out of here. Various jars with disgusting stuff inside. Uh, I was talking about the door, but... Hey, there's a face! You taking a bath? It's a big pool, but I'd rather not use it. I mean, he's using it. He's obviously fine. I don't see the problem. Go join him. Nothing wrong with taking baths together, man. This building... I just skipped the room. Can I look at these? No. That's behind curtains. I can go down the steps. There's some meat over here. Can I look at the meat? I gotta look at the meat. I'm hungry. Oh, there are dogs and cats. Dude, what the fuck? It's messed up. Oof. Now saving. Uh. Uh. I'm stuck. Let me out. Please! Oh! Okay, bye! I'm dead. That's it! Am I gonna wake up from the nightmare? No, it's still going. Oh, hello. Baby faces. Yeah, you better shut your mouth. Hey, you look high as a kite, my friend. Huh. A little bit weird, but that's fine. I've seen some messed up stuff in this world so far, so... I'm not afraid of you. Not right now. I'm going this way now. Ha ha! I can't. Can't look at them. Okay. Am I supposed to do something here? Oh, their mouths are closed now. Hmm. They've learned their lesson. Can I get out of here? This hallway sucks. There's floating babies. I'm just gonna keep going. Things are happening. Let me out! I want to get out of this room. It's not fun. Go back. Come on now, show me something. Damn babies. Stop yelling at me. Ooh. They're pushing me away. I have no choice. Let me through. Let me go. Oh, they're on both sides. Okay, bye. I just got bullied by babies. Mom! Wake me up! Mom? You just gonna leave me here? My greatest fears were realized in the winter. The days grew short and the longer nights merely provided this wretch with more opportunities. It was a difficult time for my family. My grandmother, a wonderfully kind and gentle woman, had deteriorated greatly since the death of my grandfather. My mother was trying her best to keep her in the community as long as possible. However, dementia is cruel and degenerative illness, robbing a person of their memories one day at a time. Soon she recognized none of us, and it became clear that she would need to be moved from her house to a nursing home. Before she could be moved, my grandmother had a particularly difficult few nights. 
and my mother decided that she would stay with her. As much as I loved my grandmother and felt nothing but anguish at her illness, to this day I feel guilty that my first thoughts were not of her, but of what my nightly visitor may do should it become aware of my mother's absence. Her presence being the one thing which I was sure was protecting me from the full horror of this thing's reach. I rushed home from school that day and immediately wrenched the bed sheets and mattress from the lower bunk. Removing all the slats and placing an old desk, a chest of drawers, and some chairs which we kept in a cupboard where the bottom bunk used to be. I told my father I was making an office, which he found adorable, but I would be damned if I'd give that thing a place to sleep for one more night. As darkness approached, I lay there knowing my mother was not in the house. I did not know what to do. My only impulse was to sneak into her jewelry box and take a small family crucifix which I had seen there before. While my family were not very religious, at that age I still believed in God and hoped that somehow this would protect me. Although fearful and anxious, while gripping the crucifix under my pillow, tightly in one hand, sleep eventually came and as I drifted off to sleep, to dream, I hoped that I would awaken in the morning without incidents. Unfortunately, that night was the most terrifying of all. Great, can't wait! Night 5? Chapter 5? Whatever. We go by chapters in this story. Urban Explorer. Let's go. Show me what's in the most terrifying night of all. Yeah, let's save. Good idea. Uh, chapter two, three. Yeah. It says, "Wolf." I'm pretty sure that's a cat. Is that a cat saying "Wolf" with a picture of Frankenstein? Hmm. Frankenstein, Stein, whatever. Cool. Glad I let me do that. Uh, I don't think I can search these desks. So I'm just gonna move on. The feeling that something's invading your privacy, even without ill will, is still disturbing. I agree with that. So stuffy in this room. <laughs> I feel like I'm out of breath. Hey, don't yell. This is school, man. You can't be yelling, yelling in the hallways. Oh, hey. Squid face teacher or something. You are good. Aw, oh, thanks, teacher. You are good. <laughs> Thank you for reading that to me. I really needed to know. Even if you don't know why they are here, you hold the greatest amount of fear for them. Check in all these rooms. The pie symbols? Are there a bathtub here? It's a triceratops. An old picture of what seems to be a religious man and woman. The bathtub in the middle of the classroom. Yeah, that's kind of weird. You don't take baths in public. Sounds of screams are awful. They're even worse when they are your own. I guess. Hello. Uh, oh, I went downstairs. Is there more upstairs? There's more rooms. <laughs> what are these freaking noises? There's a piece of paper here. It reads, knock, knock. Don't knock. Oh, Jesus Christ. Whew. That was so unexpected. That was good. A pile of mattresses dirty and worn out. See, that was a jump scare without throwing it at my screen. That was good. Instead of, like, the normal freaking... The whole screen becomes a monster's face. That was good, though. That was good. You got me. Uh, hello? Okay. <laughs> it locked. I didn't want to go in there anyway, sir, ma'am, person. A writing desk with some school material on it. Mmm. Yeah, that was definitely the scariest of all so far. I didn't like that. What does that say? A writing desk with some school material. Read the note. It looks important. No. Okay. All right, I think I'm done on this floor now. Let's go down. I'm not going back in that classroom. Man, I should just follow the spookies. Uh, hello? What are you? Can you hurt me? Oh, I just can't. They don't hurt me. They're just walking around. What is this? Some kind of droppery? Okay, well, I don't think there's anything here that I can do. Doesn't seem like there's an item or anything I can pick up, so... Actually, I don't think I've picked up any items in this game at all so far. 
So I do not know, let me out. I guess I'll just leave this room, it's kind of weird. We got cheap people. Get a look in these classrooms. The lock on the door is broken. I don't think I can get in here. All right. Stop yelling. I know you're in pain, but keep it to yourself, man. I'm scared too. Ooh, I don't want to go down there. A busted old machine of some sort. Some bushes. Plants grow through cracks in the floor. Clean that shit up. I guess I'm going down. Bad idea, but I'm going down. Now saving, something bad's gonna happen. Oh, there's gonna be a monster or something down here. Huh? Where am I going? I'm lost! Already, I'm just gonna hang right. Oh, it's dark. Is that a cow or a man? Or a very angry woman? Hmm. I have no idea where I'm going. I don't think I'd be going down here. If that if I was this child, I would definitely not be here. Uh, you Dude, if you're screaming like that, you're something something's up. Hey, look at all the creatures up there. They're dancing. Hi. I talked to Don't Don't climb on it. Oh what the Okay. Sacrifice me, make me into a powerful creature. <laughs> Why would I voluntarily climb on this thing? Oh. Alright, here he comes. I'm about to get stabbed. Back up, you fools. Just like you die in your dream, you die for real, sort of thing. Or... Hey, mom! Oh, dad. Same thing. You're awfully quiet nowadays. Is there something wrong, son? Nothing. Are you sure? Is there something wrong with your new room? Are you lonely without your brother? No. All right then. <laughs> All right. Thanks, dad. I appreciate the concern. I woke gradually. The room was once again dark. As my eyes adjusted, I could gradually make out the window and the door and the walls. Some toys on the shelf and... Even to this day, I shuddered to think of it, for there was no noise. No rustling of sheets, no movement at all. The room felt lifeless. Lifeless, yet not empty. The nightly visitor, that unwelcome, wheezing, hate-filled thing which had terrorized me night after night, was not in the bottom bunk. It was in my bed! Uh, get out? I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. Utter terror had shaken the very sound from my voice. I lay motionless, if I could not scream. I did not want to let it know I was awake. I had not seen it yet. I could only feel it. I was obscured under my blanket. I could see its outline, and I could feel its presence, but I dared not look. The weight of its press pressed down on top of me, a sensation I will never forget. When I say that hours passed, I do not exaggerate. Laying there motionless in the darkness, I was every bit a scared and frightened young boy. If it had been during the summer months, it would have been light by then. But the grasp of winter is long and unrelenting, and I knew it would be hours before sunrise. A sunrise which I yearned for. I was a timid child by nature, but I, I reached a breaking point. A moment where I could wait no more, where I could survive under this intimately deviant abomination no longer. Fear can sometimes wear you out, make you threadbare, a shell of nerves leaving only the slightest trace of you behind. I had to get out of, the, out of that bed, then I remembered the crucifix. My hand still lay underneath the pillow, but it was empty. I slowly moved my wrist around to find it, minimizing as best as I could the sound of vibrations caused, but it could not be found. I had either knocked it off of the top bunk or it had, I could not even bear to think of it, been taken from my hand. Without the crucifix, I lost any sense of hope. Even at such a young age, you can be a 
acutely aware of what death is and intensely frightened by it. I knew I was going to die in that bed if I lay there. Dorbid, passive, doing nothing. I had to leave that room behind, but how? Should I leap from the bed and hope that I make it to the door? What if it's faster than me? Or should I slowly sip out of that top bunk, hoping to not disturb my uncanny bedfellow? Realizing that I had not stirred when I moved, trying to find the crucifix, I began to have the strangest of thoughts. Which is? Not oh, new chapter. All right. I guess I will save the uh, getting the heck out of that bed for next night. I'm underwater. Am I a fish? Yeah, I'm a fish. Oh, save first. Uh, save back here. Oh, no. I'm just swimming. Hello, fishy. Huh. Oh, I'm not going to... Why am I underwater? This is so weird. I guess I'll just go left. Dun 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 dun. Playing feeding frenzy. Let's go. Where the small fish at? Uh, is this is some kind of submarine. Am I supposed to go in this thing? Ah, I suppose. No idea what this is, but I'm going... Oh, there's a dead body there. Hey, is that my father? What the heck? Father. Drain water, remove diving gear. Oh, I had diving gear. That doesn't look like diving gear. But yes, I will do that. I thought I was in my pit. My PJs in the water. It was a dream after all. All right. Can't go in the door. Ah, I'm going down. Dad. I need to find my dad. Let's see what he was working on first. Read logbook. Yes. One of my biggest fears is deep water. Ironic when you consider that. that's a lot of reading. Uh, just you guys can pause and read that if you'd like. Uh, there's no way I was reading all that. All right, I guess I'm going to the right. Look at all these squids. Or whatever they're called. Hey, what's up, dude? Disgusting fish. Oh, I just jumped into the hole. All right, bye, Dad. This is not good. It's got teeth. Okay. See ya. <laughs> no! Why would I go here? Let me go! I can't move. This is the end for me. Delicious. Child. My favorite snack. Fresh meat. Alright. I'm back home. That was nice and short. What if it was asleep? It hadn't so much as breathed since I woken up. Perhaps it was resting, believing that it had finally got me. That I was finally in its grasp. Or perhaps it was toy with me. Why well, yacht it? <laughs> After all, I had been doing just that for countless nights. And now with me under it, pinned against my mattress with no mother to protect me, maybe it was holding off, savoring its victory until the last possible moment like a wild animal savoring its prey. I tried to breathe as shallowly as possible and mustering every ounce of courage I could. I reached over slowly with my right hand and began to peel the blanket off me. When I found all those covers, I will stop my heart. I did not see it, but as my hand moved the blanket, it brushed against something, something smooth and cold, something which felt unmistakably like a gaunt head held my breath in terror as I was sure it must now have known that I was awake. Nothing. It did not stir. It felt dead. After a few moments, I placed my hand carefully further down the blanket and felt a thin, poorly formed forearm. My confidence and almost twisted sense of curiosity grew as I moved down further to a disproportionately larger bicep muscle. 
The arm was outstretched, lying across my chest, with the hand resting on my left shoulder as if it had grabbed me in my sleep. I realized that I would have to move this cadaverous appendage if I even so much as hoped to escape its grasp. For some reason, the feeling of torn, ragged clothing on the shoulder of this nighttime invader stopped me in my tracks. Fear once again swelled in my stomach and in my chest as I recoiled my hand in disgust at the touch of straggled, oily hair. What if it's like his mom back or something? I could not bring myself to touch its face, although I wondered to this very day what it would have felt like. Dear God, it moved. We're doing through another night. Okay, another night. Just let me know what's in the room with me. It's gotta be something good, right? Okay. Apologize for all the yawning. I don't know why I am. It's just, it's just happening. Ooh, this is huge. Hello. Attack on Titan? Dun -dun 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 -dun. Yeah, I'm not sticking around. Ew, look at this. Am I going it? Oh, I am. Uh, okay, let's go in the Uzi. Uzi goop. Hello, eyeballs. What, what, what you looking at? Ha ha. I'm gonna go right. And I'm gonna keep going right. Hello, face man. There's some weird creatures here, I gotta say. Uh, I touch this thing? There's some weird things in this game, I gotta say. Eyeballs and faces stuck on red flesh creatures. And then these two fat people just chilling in the sauna. Come on up. Okay. It's you again. I've seen you before. Yeah, I knew you were gonna block me there too. I'm just gonna go this way then. Bye. Okay. You're gonna block me from this boy too. No. Oh, it's different. Ah! I've seen you before, have I not? Hey, do you mind if I just leave? I don't want to be here. Oh, I don't have a choice. Alright, well, take me. Let me go. It's pretty obvious I can't do anything with you. I'm just a poor boy. Do it! Alright. Okay. Supposed to say you're gonna play the whole song or what? No, I'm back in my bed. Once again. It was subtle, but its grip on my shoulder and across my body strengthened. No tears came, but God, how I wanted to cry. As its hand and arm slowly coiled around me, my left leg brushed along the cool wall which the bed lay against. Of all that happened to me in that room, this was the strangest. I realized that this clutching, rancid thing which drew great delight from violating a young boy's bed was not entirely on top of me. It was sticking out from the wall like a spider striking from its lair. Don't do it! Suddenly, its grip moved from a slow tightening to a sudden squeeze. It pulled and clawed at my clothes as if frightened that the opportunity would soon pass. I fought against it, but its emaciated arm was too strong for me. Its head rose up, writhing and contorting under the blanket. I now realized where it was taking me, into the wall. I fought for my dear life. I cried and suddenly my voice returned to me, yelling, screaming, but no one came. Then I realized why I was so eager to suddenly strike, why this thing had to have me now through my window, that window which seemed to represent so much malice from outside, streaked hope, the first rays of sunshine, I struggled further knowing that if I could just hold on, it would soon be gone. As I fought for my life, the unearthly parasite shifted, slowly pulling itself up my chest, its head now poking out from under the blanket, wheezing, coughing, rasping. I do not remember its features, I simply remember its breath against my face, foul and as cold as ice. As the sun broke over the horizon, that dark place, that suffocating room of content, was washed, bathed in sunlight. I passed out as its scrawny fingers encircled my neck, squeezing their very life from me. Don't give me another night now, I want to see what happens.
I awoke, uh, I awoke to my father offering to make me some breakfast. A wonderful sight indeed. I had survived the most horrible experience of my life until then, and now I moved the bed away from the wall, leaving behind the furniture I had believed would stop that thing from taking a bed. Little did I think that it would try to take mine, and me. Weeks passed without incident. Yet no one, yet on one cold, frostbitten night, I woke to the sound of the furniture where the bunk beds used to be, vibrating violently. I lay there, sure I could hear a distant wheezing come from deep within the wall, finally fading into the distance. The following year, I was given a larger room on the other side of the house, and my parents took that room as their bedroom. They said they didn't need a large room, just one big enough for a bed and a few things. They lasted 10 days. We moved on the 11th. They lasted 10 days? Did they, did they start having nightmares too? Interesting. It moves. But it wasn't just a kid. I guess the, that room was haunted or something. Eight million ways to die. Based on the story, Bedtime by Michael Whitehouse. Alright, you guys should probably check that out if you're interested in this game. RPG Maker MV Port. I can't do anything, I can walk around, but... I'm pretty sure there's nothing in here. But the game's over. Ah. The end. And that was it. <laughs> that was that was actually pretty good. For a free game, I liked that one a lot. It was definitely better than Patricia. <laughs> the jump scares were stronger in Patricia, but this one was more of an atmospheric type horror which I do like as well, so that was pretty good. Now that was it, Moves. It's free to play on Steam if you want to play it for yourself. I'm sure I missed a few things, so you can always go back and check it out for yourselves. On that note, thank you so much for watching my playthrough of It Moves. And if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. It's time to wake up.